Hello everyone and welcome back once again to Panzer Strategy where we'll be going for Operation Sea Line here. After successful battle for Britain, it's time to put the landing forces to action. But first of all, let's go and upgrade the airstrike ability to level 3. Oh, very nice. All right, we have a couple of prestige points to spend, not that many. Um, first of all, do uh, we get to upgrade to the Panzer 3G? Let's do that. Then I want to purchase <laughs> purchase this uh, this tank as well. There we go. So we got those and let's continue. After that, I do want to start, um, yeah, let's, there's one more thing that I want to buy for the next mission. That's another Junkers 88 because I really need those for the upcoming mission. And because there will be so many naval battles, uh, what I want to do is I want to get all of my Junkers 88s and I want to go and give them torpedoes because um, these Junker CDAs will then be extremely effective at taking out enemy ships because the torpedoes will allow me to do the damage directly against the enemy hull instead of uh, actually damaging their 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 weapons. So the the weapons kind of make it so that the ships have extra health, but. I can bypass that extra health by equipping torpedoes, and that's exactly what I want to do with all of these guys. Let's sell the incendiaries, put some torpedoes on there. You also need to level up. And whoop, let's go for equipment. Do you have torpedoes? You're going to sell those incendiaries for you as well. Excellent. Then afterwards, I want to get radars for all of my fighters because that way they will have to spot the enemy fighters a lot earlier, which will also be great. Let's deploy that. And I want to, to go and start taking care of my artillery. The way to do it is to, at the very least, give all of them incendiaries. You, how do you, you don't have it. You do, okay, so let's start giving some of these also additional ammunition um, because that will allow them to just attack a lot more. And having five ammunition over three ammunition is, is very good. And I don't really care about external tanks and such, um, at least not for now. So I, I think they're doing quite well there. All right, that leaves me with 44 prestige points. That's okay. Um, yeah, let's take a look and see what the generals have to say about the upcoming mission. Landing in Britain is fraught with many risks. The British will keep their teeth clenched tight while fighting to every millimeter of their island. However, I understand the Führer's desire to put an end to the British metropolis at any cost. After the success of our strategic air offensive, Britain is on the brisk of a total military defeat. But if we miss the chance now, the British will restore their strength and will attack the Reich wherever they can. Mm, yeah, so we need, we must win here. British Matilda two tanks, in terms of their security, are second to none. It would be nice to get these vehicles as trophies. <laughs> uh huh. On the first stage of the operation, I would deploy our airborne paratroopers. They would occupy and retain ports and other strategically important facilities before main forces arrive. Lack of heavy weapons can be compensated with the fleet and aviation support. Ports. Well, let's just uh, get right into the cutscene and see what the Fuhrer has to say about our upcoming mission here. Uh, yeah, let's let's get started. We don't get any global effects for destroying all the convoys in a previous mission, but that's okay. Britain is at its last gasp. We must finish off this monster. The fastest way to win is to invade the British Isles. If the fleet in the Luftwaffe give us the opportunity to land on the island, the British Empire will fall apart like a house of cards. After the death of the Metropolis, we will be able to easily control the British colonial legacy. 
For the cause, the people of Germany expect a feat from you. And a feat is exactly what they will get. General Staff to the command of the operation. According to the plan of Operation Sea Lion, our landing forces must cross the English Channel and disembark on the southeast coast of England. After the landing, it is necessary to push the British troops to the north, attack London by storm and then seize the nearby cities. Portsmouth, Ventnor, Bristol, Gloucester, Oxford. Having lost the capital and important cities in the southeast of the country, the British will be forced to capitulate. Needless to say, the British fleet will try to put forth maximum resistance to our landing. Kriegsmarine allotted all possible forces to cover the landing. Still, the superiority in a naval <coughs> power is still on the side of the enemy. Therefore, the most risky part of the operation for us is the battle at sea. However, after the success of the strategic air offensive against Britain, we now dominate in the air. With the help of aviation, we can neutralize the naval superiority of the enemy. General Staff Chef de Aires, General Oberst Franz Halder. All right, so I'm here in the deployment screen. Let's talk strategy for this mission first. So I want to go and conduct this mission into three stages. And the first stage will be the destruction of the British naval force. Well, it actually looks pretty neat this way. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so the first thing that I want to do is the destruction of the British naval force. Now, we have three separate forces ourselves, uh, one over uh, in here in the west, and the British forces will be pretty much near that, so they'll be found around this territory. Then we have a few forces in the middle and some enemy forces over here in the center as well. And then over in the north, where there will also be some British naval forces around this particular area. And we want to destroy those first. Now, during this first stage of the operation, of course, I can use my own naval forces, but also the air forces that we have at our disposal. Um, one thing that you want to keep in mind with that, though, is that the enemy air force, despite what the uh, commander just said, especially at the beginning, is still out at large. And the enemy can also use the zoom and boom ability to make your, uh, well, your day very, very miserable. Uh, so because those forces will primarily hang around London and its airfields, I actually want to use minimal air forces in the north. Um, I will deploy a good number of fighters up there, um, but... I want to engage the enemy in the north without using too much air forces until we can get good anti-aircraft coverage over the enemy forces as enemy air forces as well. And that will be challenging, but I think that if you want to reduce the amount of damage you take during this mission, that's an absolute must. I think that you want to try and... Um, Prevent an air engagement near London at all times if you uh, want to, to gain prestige. And prestige can't be found very readily. I'm, I'm not saying we, we get none. But in a mission like this where you're taking damage to your ships, which are very, very expensive, um, making sure that you still get some prestige at the end of the mission will be pretty hard. So you want to minimize your losses as much as possible. And one of the things you want to do here is not force an air engagement with the RAF in the north. In the south, things are um, much more lenient. The enemy has a very small um, air force down in the south. Um, so you would be fine using your bombers here. And that's primarily one of where I want to put the focus of the air force. So not in the north, but in the south. Um, which is exactly what we'll do. And... I'm only deploying the Air Force for now because I'll be talking about the remainder of my strategy later, but the first strategy is the Naval War. Um, so we already have a Messerschmitt 110C here, so I, I really only want to deploy a... F um, well, actually, let's... 
yeah, let's deploy one fighter up here. And I think that will suit me well enough for now. I want to place at least the bomber that can strike twice, which is uh, this one up front. And let's at the very least also place this bomber. And another Junkers 88 around here. So then we have two Junkers 88s and one of the 87B bombers. Together with these other guys, that should be enough. Then over here, I cannot land air forces in this area specifically, but I do want to place one fighter and I want to place the other two Junkers 88 bombers around this area to win the naval engagement over in the center. And then I still want to provide some air coverage over up in the north. So I will be placing at least those two fighters here. Uh, this last Junkers 87, I will place that down here. So I can also move to strike potentially at the enemy air forces. Um, the biggest problem here is that the 87Bs don't have the range like the Junkers 88 do. These guys have a range of 20, whereas these have a range of 16. So that's quite a difference, actually, which you will notice on the map itself as well. One last thing to note about the naval engagements is that the enemy will receive reinforcements between turn 2 and turn 3, uh, primarily in the west over in here and in the northern section up here so actually in turn two you will want to move your naval forces as much to the middle of the map as possible uh, because the forces that are going to arrive as reinforcements will immediately be able to fire uh, and move during the turn they arrive there so you can't like wait for them because they have the initiative when they arrive on the map. So you really want to be as far away from these guys as possible to minimize your losses and then attack them the turn afterwards. That also means that you will want to prioritize um, having these units move as much to the center of the map on the first turn. Uh, because you know that will be the best for when these enemy troops arrive. Uh, that's the first stage of the operation. The second stage of the operation involves the landing of our forces in the main uh, staging areas, um, which is going to be for me at Dover because of the big depot that we'll be able to capture immediately together with Folkstown here. Um, so my, no my eastern battle group up here will primarily land in this sector and then move towards places such as Brighton, London, and Oxford, ultimately. Whereas I will have another group of forces which will land down here near Weymouth and move upon Bournemouth for the, the depot. And uh, Lyme Regis, pretty much from this location, they will move upon Portsmouth and Bristol and ultimately Gloucester. Of course, I will also have a very small landing party at Ventor in order to take that and its small depot. Um, these forces will be aided by the Kriegsmarine. And I want to only start the second stage once I know that the first stage is already completed, completed in a certain part of the map or most of the map. I really want to have the naval action under wraps because I don't want my troop transports to be attacked. They're very, very vulnerable and the enemy has very good spotting. So you don't want to do that. Just keep them safe. Only initiate the second part of the mission once the first part has been completed. And you will get enough turns. You have 20 turns on this map. The ground resistance is rather uh, limited compared to the naval and air engagements in this uh, this one as well. So that's really a non-factor. Of course, you don't want to take 10 turns in the naval battles, but you have 20 turns to take the entire map. That's pretty long. And once the uh, Royal Navy is gone, uh, 
you're you're good to go here. So the last stage of the mission is going to be moving inlands from these staging areas. Of course, there'll be no more backup from the Kriegsmarine, so you'll have to do everything yourself. Um, and that's going to be the third part, capturing all the other objectives as much as you can find. But uh, there's, yeah, the, the main strategy here is again that we'll move these two separate forces and move them towards the different locations. So in order to split up my forces, what I'm going to do is each of the two groups at the very least needs a recon. I want to give both of them an anti-aircraft gun. I'll be placing some of these heavy guns up in the north together with three artillery. And I think at least two infantry. Why do I give them two infantry? Well, we have more paratroopers up north, so I think they'll be able to handle that uh, just fine. And let's deploy the artillery out here. And the tanks and these bad boys up here then. Alright, that's the deployment. Let's get started with Operation Sea Lime. Alright, first of all, as I already said, I want to I know that the enemy is around this particular area, so I just want to do a, a bit of recon here. And because of the way they are approaching, I pretty much should have good intel on this entire region. Alright, so we spotted these three and a fighter. Now, I do have the Prince Eugen, which has two five range cannons, whereas the enemy. Tribal class units only have a range of four. So if I can get a spot in which I can deal damage to both of them without getting hit. One, two, three, four, five, five here. Maybe I can take down their anti-aircraft guns so I can bomb these two guys at leisure. Uh, ah, there we are. Just waiting for that. I have four attacks in total. Okay. Excellent. Both of the anti-aircraft guns are down. Nice. Now we still need to deal with the Renown class. Uh, I, it doesn't have anti-aircraft guns at the very least. So if the, the Hurricane is gone, I can attack it at leisure. Now, I can already damage the Hurricane class with anti-aircraft, but I need to stay at least one hex away from that enemy renowned class because it will out of fire upon my units. Double hit. Probably won't make it. No, but you can. Nice. Okay, got very, very lucky there. I'm exceedingly happy. Now I can move into measurement 1 of 10. Use altitude even. And move here. Because this will provide fighter coverage. Uh, these guys, yeah, they can't use altitude a second time because of the movement, but... Uh, they do have the multiple support ability. So now, with those guys taken down let's find that Junkers 88 with double attack this one out here nice let's bring it up here attack twice i finish off that bad boy excellent they're out of ammo but they'll land again on the next turn nice all right we still have two tribal class ships up here well, first of all, let's send this 88 up here. I do have one which can still damage the hull. Um, so I want to save that one for later. I think I primarily want to use these kind of uh, planes against the smaller ships for now. Uh, because these guys aren't going to be that much of a threat anyway. Like this, It's just not... Not that dangerous in general. Uh, 
two hull, three depth charges, and main gun. All right. So the first attack, even. They still have one main gun then. Oh, come on. Well. There we go. They had to save that last piece <laughs> for last. Oh well. All right. Um, let's just wait for a bit. You guys can actually use torpedoes here. That's not bad. And I'll wait besides that. So we know that there's also some enemy navy around this area. So again, I want to use aviation and just see what the enemy might be up to here. Ah, it's a little bit off, but it still worked ultimately. And all these guys have anti-aircraft support. Uh, that makes it a bit tougher. Can use these 88s and these as well and that okay these are <laughs> slightly out of range how about you you as well if only i put them up front um well that means that i don't really want to go for an engagement here because these guys have a movement of six and a range of six so is one two three four five six they can move up here one two three four five six they will never be able to go for this these forces out here never um so i'm, I'm better off just doing this here and keep my units safe move in the fighter uh in here it can to use altitude but i don't need to so we're mm, pretty good Let's get these guys back to the rear, where they hopefully won't be seen by the enemy, and thus won't be targeted. I'm also going to move these guys over here, because I don't want them to take any damage. Let's move you to the back, and I'm going to hide my forces in the woods. You were thinking that might be a bit strange, um, but I don't want these, these forces to be seen, and if the enemy is unable to detect my forces, it, it can't damage them. That's the the gist of it. Now, I think that, that keeping the char there is fine. Again, they probably won't see it, and it would have to go all the way there. Let's move you a little bit closer. So they might see this, for example, but they can't reach it. So I'm not too worried. Then for these, I want to move along the coastline in the hope that the enemy again won't be able to detect these and that this keeps them safe and hidden and then i'll try to strike at them on the next turn so i'll be moving in a bit closer and potentially i can hit these guys on the next turn and keep them safe and it also means that these guys are going to move through this way lose a lot of fuel that's unfortunate but they do have 60 so ultimately it's not that bad up here again let's do a bit of recon on this area now very likely they will have anti-aircraft defenses around that airfield so i want to stay sheer clear of that although i already did say that i don't really want to go for any na any air engagements around that area all right so the enemy has a leander class which has six guns uh, which is a light cruiser, but still quite potent. Not like the destroyers, which are much, much weaker. They're the, my lowest priority. Um, the King George class obviously has the highest priority. And let's see then. Because these guys have a 6 range, 4 range, and a 3 range cannon. But the closest they can get is here. This is a 4 range, right? Yeah. So for these guys to move into this particular hex, uh, they'll be able to fire upon everything, at the very least. Um, but 
Yeah, this is this is okay. Um, first of all, can use these to attack the hull. Oh wow! I am absolutely hammering the enemy here. That's really nice. All right, that's good damage. So as for you, they have. Five, five, three, I think. Uh, oh, that's selected. Yeah, that's a range of three. So moving in here will allow me to attack all of these. All right, let's. These guns have a range of four. One, two, three, four, five. So even now, it won't be able to attack back I I'm fine with at least attacking here once let's see what that does because with these guys I primarily want to take out their their weapons their main guns the secondary gun I don't really care about but if both of those main guns are gone I consider this unit to be pretty much out of action. Okay, this guy also has two six range guns. And this is a four and three. Let's move you up here and fire those uh, six range cannons. And we'll take some fire ourselves here. Unfortunately. So they're down to three. If I can launch some more torpedoes, then that might help me quite a bit. But that does mean well, first of all, let's get you all the way out here. Oh, they would still fire, huh? Uh, that's that's not good. Okay, let's let's get you in here and move them out here. They would still take damage. That's not nice. All right, let's use these then. Okay, one final time. Yeah, and now use the torpedoes here. That finishes them off at least. Okay, um, yeah, let's fire at these guys first. One of their main guns is gone. Yeah, I, I need to keep firing here. Okay, their second main gun is down too, and I don't I care less about this 102 millimeter. So now I want to focus upon the destroyers here, uh, primarily. I'll attack with these first because the Knice now is still undamaged. And uh Taking out their torpedoes is also quite nice here. Again, primarily I'll be focusing upon their guns. Because, for example, their main gun is gone now. No reason to keep attacking. Okay, I'm going to take a hit back. From you. But on the Admiral Hipper, I guess that's okay. Mm, they can't fire anymore. Yeah, the Scharnhorst is getting it, but I think at seven, yeah, that's pretty much as low as I can go with these guys. But we did 
quite well, I think. So they're... Well, their guns are not out yet. But I want to use anti-aircraft guns on this two here. So I'll move in here, attack this thing again, and their main guns are not out yet. There we go. So they don't have main guns. These guys don't have it. Let's use that. Only these guys have guns left, so it's not the end of the world here. Let's get you back, you back. Moving these down. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use altitude. And I'm going to put you up in here. These guys will also use altitude. And be placed primarily right behind it then you're going to use altitude and move in here so this should hopefully keep them safe I wouldn't okay you can't use torpedoes you can destroy them though almost missed that so that worked out quite well all right, uh, both of these can just move a little bit. I want to keep them in the air, but oh yeah, I also want to hide these guys in the woods again with the same reason. Uh, just trying to make sure that they are safe and won't get attacked by enemy bombers and or ships. All right, I. We'll be pulling back. Okay, staying in the city there is fine. Means I moved all of my units. And I'm quite good to go here. Let's see what the enemy can muster up. Okay, they didn't attack. Or now they did. Yeah, this is this is what I'm talking about. They can use that zoom and boom ability. Really? They spotted it? What are they doing? Okay. Really? Found my unit inside the woods. How exactly? That's completely bogus and doesn't make any sense at all. But okay. Guess I just randomly took some damage on my artillery for no reason. Like, how would they be able to spot this five hexes away? 
has a spotting range of three. So I really have no clue what's going on here. It, that really seems to be odd to me because, well, like I said, it has a spotting range of three. There's no way it should be able to see this unit. And it didn't get the spotting sign either. So, yeah. Okay. Sure game. Um, well, I, I don't even have the, uh, the points in order to fix it properly. Well, anyway, let's continue here. Um, I want to sh send all of these ships south, as I said before. I do need to use the anti-aircraft guns too, though. Let's just start doing that uh, here. Do you have a gun left? No. But I don't want to attack just yet. You can only attack these guys without moving. So you will. And then. Say that I were to use altitude again. I could destroy these, but not those guys. So you're out of anti-aircraft. This is the Admiral Hipper. They have five range guns. And then move in close for three range. Let's just get a bit of distance here. I want to use the aviation recon around this area once more to do a bit of spotting. I should also increase the damage that I'm doing upon these guys. And they have two artillery here, which I might potentially already destroy. shame but I will land these guys back at the airfield for refueling and yeah I will leave these other two for now oh I can still ah oh, come on <laughs> shame okay um one, two, th I want to stay again within three hexes, but I want to get away from this region as far as possible, like I said before. So I'm really going to try and move as far down as possible. First use those main guns here. Destroy in one go. Nice. You can attack without moving. Alright, I will do one more aviation recon, and this way I'll perform it like this.
to reveal those two. Okay. And then moving as far as possible. This is a four range gun, so I will attack primarily this infantry here and try to destroy it and then focus upon these down here. One, two, three, four, okay. And then get the submarine down south too. So while trying to escape whatever is out here, you know, I'm just, uh, yeah, let's land. And get up again. Okay, so they lose altitude the moment they land. Makes sense. Let's get them out again. Full fuel. Not bad. Okay. Now the enemy had some ships that were moving into this direction. So again, I want to use the aviation to try and spot those out. They must be around here somewhere again anyway. And they are. So they can't help each other. And that means... First of all, let's just start from this direction though. Now that, especially now that we know that those guys are there. Let's land you first because you're completely out of ammo. Can't get out again. Use altitude and attack the bomber. Which got destroyed. Next up. Let's use the recon, get a bit more intel on these. They do have anti-aircraft guns, uh, but I can't do, do a whole lot about those anti-aircraft guns at the moment. I will use the bomber though, dealing hull damage. Got very unlucky there. Oh well. down to two mm. this looks really funny but I'm quite sure they can fire back let's let's not do that um I cannot engage these guys here so are there anti-aircraft guns used? Only one, right? Yeah. But if I can use more torpedoes, they'll be able to fire upon me. That won't work. Okay, that means that I'm... In a bit of a pickle. All right. If I if I just accept the attack at least for one time, let's see if I get to destroy it here. Yes, I do. Nice. Perfect. Move you down. I'm gonna move these guys as far to the south as possible. And these to the west as far as possible because that might also uh, keep them away from me. Let's just move up here. And if I'm lucky, they might not get hit that badly. That's uh, quite a wish, but 
My bombers will be able to move out again on the next turn and destroy whatever reinforcements they get. So you'll stay here though. Move you back, provide cover. And fighter Guess down here. There's not much else that I can I can do like that. All right. Um, they probably don't need backup, but who knows? And we still only have these two left here. Okay. Well, let's just take a bit of damage and destroy that ship. Yeah, it sucks getting two damage all the time, especially since the estimate is one. But yeah. They also have anti aircraft abilities. I only have one fighter here. So it's Mm, pretty much a gamble. Well, if I think, yeah, they're I'm just gonna have to gamble that they're not gonna see me. Those are very, very poor odds, to be honest. Yeah, I'm. I'm not gonna risk another two damage on. My ship there. Oh, come on. It all started out so well. <laughs> Alright, there we go. And I'm taking a bit too much damage from my liking now, so. Alright. Let's go in here, because that, that will be costly to replace. So we only get 1,000. So if we go over the limit, you know, we're already in poor straits. <laughs> Let's move you even further to the back, because apparently the enemy can see my units regardless. Um, also means that recon has to go back. I think only ground forces remain, but it's... Best to just check that out like this. Alright, now this is the turn at which the enemy reinforcements come. So that's going to be tricky. Seems like they will destroy this unit because I don't see it on the map anymore. I'll just go quickly. Yeah, they did. Right, well, I guess I'm gonna end the video here. That means no prestige for me <laughs> during this map, unfortunately. Um, yeah, well, too bad. It must be very hard to get that right, so yeah, it's, it's just challenging that way even if you know that the enemy is coming you know getting your ships out and not taking any damage like here you know they they can spot pretty much anything regardless here again they should not have any vision on that so i don't know what's going on there these guys uh they don't have radar they only have a spotting of two so how they were able to see those bombers you know it's just beyond me it's just, i i don't know how these game mechanics work but it doesn't seem like the enemy is abiding by the same rules as I am. Um, just like with the the unit down here. It's it's like, how, how did they spot that? How, how did they get to see that? And I 
as a player certainly wouldn't be able to see that so how did the enemy and the enemy doesn't use powers so there's definitely something going on there which is not entirely fair maybe the designers did it in order to make things more interesting or something um, but there's definitely something wrong with uh, with the AI there and that they are getting bonuses that I am not aware of and it seems to have to do at least with uh, you know vision and things like that that's uh, yeah, it's a bit sucky um, and you can't prepare for that I can only prepare myself by the game's rules and I can't prepare myself for rules that I, I don't know that are unclear to me or that are uh, like if I knew with 100% certainty that the enemy would have been able to see these units I would have put a different setup I would either not deploy these forces or keep them more to the rear in order to make them extra invisible or something but I certainly wouldn't deploy them in the woods where according to the normal game rules the enemy wouldn't be able to see it um, so yeah that that's something that I think is a bit unfortunate um, same here had I known about whatever rules apply here I would not have put these guys in danger but because according to normal game rules they would not be spotted unless the enemy coincidentally would put a fighter around this area um, then I would have never put them there if I knew there were other game rules but this is yeah anyway that's just me ranting on about some unfair game mechanics uh, I mean sure I make my own mistakes but having something like that is just you know it's just bad just generally bad and um, yeah I don't I don't play perfectly and uh, I make mistakes all the time and I do account myself for that you know if I mess something up it's like yeah okay well I made a mistake but this is just plain stupid so either way thanks for watching and I will see you on the next episode so take care and see you there